I'm Sam, and I'd like to talk to you a little bit today about plosive sounds when recording audiobooks. So what is a plosive? Well, another word for a plosive is a stop consonant or an oral occlusive. But all it really means is that you're using part of your vocal tract to stop the passage of air from your lungs and through your larynx. And when we do that, you tend to get a little explosion or plosive bit of air pressure coming out of your mouth, which if that then travels into the microphone diaphragm, that can create a distortion effect that is really distracting when your audience is trying to listen to the world you're creating for them when you're narrating an audiobook. So what are the plosive sounds in English? Well, in English we have six plosive sounds. We have D, G and B, and then T, K and P. And three of them, the D, G, and B, D, G, and B, are what we call voiced plosives. And then the T, K, and P, the T, K, and P, are what we call voiceless plosives. And they can all be a problem, but the voiceless ones can be a particular problem, especially when you're saying P or K, so P or K. You can get a big blast of air pressure into the microphone, creates a distortion we don't want it at all. You can try it for yourself. If you put your hand in front of your face and you say P, you'll be able to feel the air on the back of your hand. Now, we don't want this, so how do we deal with it? Well, there are a few things you can do. One of them, a very easy thing, is to buy one of these, get yourself a, what we call a pop shield or a pop filter, and this little circle of plastic here contains a couple of sheets of nylon that disrupt the flow of the air from that plosive to make it softer before it actually hits the microphone, and they're really helpful. If you're just starting out recording audiobooks, you definitely need to get yourself one of these. But there are some other things we can do as well. Sometimes when you're narrating, even with the best will in the world, you can't avoid a plosive because you have to deliver it aggressively. So I did an audiobook the other day where I had to say the word pig very, very loudly. I had to say pig. Now, if I'm doing that directly into the microphone, even with the pop field, the pop shield, the pop filter, it's going to make a sound in the microphone. It's going to distort the microphone. So my first technique to suggest to you is that you can turn your head away from the microphone. Now, you wouldn't want to do this for all of your recording, because obviously you'd then not be putting all of the sound and all the dynamics of your voice directly into the microphone capsule. But for just a single sound, like the word pig, it can be very helpful to, instead of going pig straight down the microphone, you're going pig to one side of the microphone. So tilting your head is one method. Pop shield is another. The third, and by far the most important one, if you're serious about getting good at audiobook narration or any kind of voice work in front of a microphone, is breath control. Now, if you're an actor and you're coming to audiobooks from acting, you probably already know quite a bit about breath control. But if you've not come from that background, you definitely need to learn something about it. You need to go find yourself a class, or find yourself a teacher who can work with you. I could recommend, for example, Nicola Redman is a fantastic teacher of vocal technique. Or Yvonne Morley, one of my favorite people. She is a brilliant, brilliant teacher of vocal technique as well. Work with them and work on how you can control your breath because what's much easier when you're narrating an audiobook is to have enough control over your breath that you're confident that when you hit that P or that K or that T or that B or that G or that D, that you can simply control the amount of breath that is coming out of your mouth when you use whichever part of your vocal tract you're using to stop the sound, you are controlling the amount of breath that's coming out. And you can practice it just simply by going P, 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 and trying to experiment with different ways to control that amount of air. Because by putting your hand there, you always know how much is coming out. Of course, the most important P to remember when you're working on your vocal technique is practice. And if you practice, and you have a good pop filter, and you remember that if you need to do something really loud, you can always just turn your head away from the microphone to get that plosive energy going in another direction, then you will avoid having horrible distortion sounds in your microphone, which are going to take your audience right out of what you're doing. So remember, pa 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 practice, and good luck. <laughs>